Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Conway, and now we need to practice a skill that everybody dreads, and that's fractions. So here's the reality of life. There are fractions. If you are building a shed, chances are things aren't all going to come out to perfect whole numbers, and you're going to have to deal with fractions because in America, we use inches, and inches use fractions. So Fractions are a reality of life, so we need to learn how to deal with them. So there's two, two good ways to deal with fractions. Um, by far the easiest way is to buy a calculator that handles fractions well. And I actually personally recommend this Casio calculator. Um, it's a little cheaper than the Texas Instruments ones, and it actually does a little bit better with the fractions. So option one, throw money at it, buy a calculator. Option two, um, which is using least common multiples to disappear the fractions. Um, and it doesn't actually have to be the least common multiple, but least common multiple is a thing you probably learned before. So let's just review what a least common multiple is. A least common multiple of a group of numbers is the smallest number that is divisible by all of the numbers. Um, group of numbers. Quick. Okay. So for example, the least common multiple of 3, 5, and 25. So we can have the least common multiple of two numbers, but most of the time, for these purposes, it's actually going to be three. So um, first of all, check the biggest number. Is 25 divisible by both three and five? Well, no, because it's not divisible by three, but it is divisible by five. Um, so then what you want to do is you want to break up your numbers. Now, three and five are prime, so they're just three and five, but 25 is actually five times five, right? So 25 has two fives and 5 has 1 5, and 3 has 1 3. So we need a number that has um, all of these in it. Now, we only need two 5s and a 3 because we don't need to duplicate this 5. So 5 times 5, so I need enough so that each of these has all of it in it. So if we have a number that's 3 times 5 times 5, then we have 3 in there. We have 5 in there, and the 5 times 5 would be the 25. So if we multiply these three numbers together, that will create the least common multiples. So that is 5 times 5 is 25, times 3 is 75. So the least common multiple of 3, 5, and 25 is 75. Now we can just check that. 75 divided by 25 is 3. Uh, 75 divided by 5 is, uh, yep, and 75 divided by 3 is 25. So 75 is the least common multiple of 3, 5, and 25. So what we use that for in fractions is you want to look at the denominators. So it says solve the following, use the least common multiple to cancel the denominator. And like I said, technically you could find any common multiple as long as you found a number that eat, that the denominator, all the denominators were um, multiples of. So it would work. So like if you found a number that each of these numbers goes into, you're good. Now this one's pretty easy. So our two numbers are, so step one would be find the um, find the least common multiple of the denominators. So the least common multiple of, well, we have fives and twos only, five and two. So, and by the way, there are calculators that will do this for you, um, even Excel will. So if you're not sure how to find least common multiples, you can just go into Excel, type equals LCM, parentheses, five, two, it'll do it for you. Um, but since five and two are both prime, um, it, since two is not divisible by five, it's literally, we're just going to do five times two and that's going to give us 10. So the number we're going to use is 10. So then we're going to multiply by the least common multiply multiple. And again, if you just, a lot of, if you just multiply these numbers, that will always work. So you might end up with some really big numbers, but it will always work. So now we're going to multiply the whole equation on both sides by 10. So I'm, I'm going to make two sets of parentheses here. We're going to multiply by 10 on both sides of the equation because it is an equation. If we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. So that means we're going to distribute the 10 
to all of the numbers in the equation. So first we're going to do 10 times 24 fifths. So you can either just whip out your calculator and type that in, or you can remember that if you multiply fractions, then you multiply straight across. So um, you're going to have 240 divided by 5. Or you can think of it as 10 divided by 5 is 2 times 24. And it's going to cancel out the denominator because that's why we chose to multiply by that number. Now we can do this, 3 halves times 10, 10 divide 2 is 5 times 3 is equals negative 1 half, so that's going to stay negative, times 10, well half of 10 is 5, plus 14 over 5 times 10, 10 divided by 5 is 2, 14 times 2 is 28. Okay, so now we don't have fractions anymore. So um, we can just solve like normal. So then step 3 is solve like normal. So we have n's on both sides. This is a negative 5n, so to get rid of it, I'm going to add 5n to both sides of the equal sign. That will be eliminated, so I'll have 48 plus 28 is 48. And then, of course, we should check. So you want to take your negative 1, you want to plug that back into the original equation. So we have 24 fifths plus 3 over 2 times negative 1. Does that equal negative 1 half plus 14 fifths? And I am going to use the calculator for this part. So I just take my calculator. If you do have one of these, the button that looks like, um, well, it looks like a fraction. It's got, uh, uh, let's see, this button right here. That is your fraction button. So you use that for fractions. If you're using one of the Texas Instruments ones, you want this ABC button. So it looks like A, B slash C. So you use that for your fraction bar. So I'm literally going to go in, I'm going to do 24 over 5 plus 3 over 2 parentheses, negative 1, and hit equals, um, and that gives me 33 tenths. So I should remember that because I'm not going to have that one memorized. And then hopefully when I do this over here, I get the same thing. So I'm going to do, well, negative 1 half times negative 1 is just going to be 1 half plus 14. And remember, if you're using this calculator, you have to... Um, Get out of the denominator before you type the next number. And I got 33 tenths. So that means I got the same thing on both sides of the equals sign. So my answer is correct. So that's, that's how we do that. And this one was pretty easy because these were both prime numbers. So the next one I'm going to show you is one where we have a, com a, a composite number and some prime numbers and um, there's more different denominators, so you just have to be a little bit more, a little bit more steps. So same thing. First step, we need to find the least common multiple of nine, two, and three. So now we have three numbers. So the first thing to check is what goes do we, So does anything go into nine, or do they both go into nine? And they don't. But, but sometimes. You just want to check because sometimes your biggest number is your least common multiple. But in this case, 2 doesn't go into 9. So that means we have 9, which is two threes, a 2 and a 3. We need a 2. So we, we essentially are going to have to do 9 times 2, which is 18. So our least common multiple is 18. And you could just multiply all three. You'd get a bigger number, but, you know, if you have a calculator, it's not that big of a deal. So now we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 18. Okay? 18 divide 9 is 2 times 8 is 2, so this is negative 2. No, 2 times 8 is not 2. 2 times 8 is 16. Um, and remember, I'm doing, so I'm doing 18 divide the 9. That gives me 2 times 18 is 6. Minus 18 divide 2 is 9 times 3 is 27. Now I have 18 times 11 thirds, so think of that like 18 divided 3 is 6 times 11 is 66, so it's negative 66n. And then 2 times 18 
Um, just checking in my calculator. I don't want to do this wrong on a video. Is 36. See, even I use the calculator to confirm sometimes. Okay, so now, honestly, the uh, basic math has never been my forte. I use a calculator a lot. <laughs> I really like solving equations, big picture stuff, eh, arithmetic. Okay, so now negative 66n needs to get, now we just have a basic equation. So we need to get rid of negative 66n. So we're going to add 66n to both sides. Those cancel. We have negative 16. Um, that's another calculator one. So we have negative 27 plus 66. See what I mean by the numbers get kind of big when we use this method, which is no big thing because we have a calculator. And the main reason I'm recommending this method is I know a lot of you guys are using either the calculators on your laptops or the calculators on your phones, and they just don't do fractions well. So they can help you with these big numbers, but they can't help you with the fractions. Okay, now we have n here, so we need to get rid of this negative 16. We're going to add 16 to both sides. So you have 39n equals 36 plus 16. You divide 39 on both sides. You have 52, divide 39, which is 4 thirds. And um, don't freak out if you get a fraction on these because if I give you fractions, expect you might get fractions as an answer. Honestly, fractions are always an option as an answer. I've just been being nice. Um, so now we want to check that four thirds. So we've got negative eight over nine. We have negative eight over nine minus three over two times four over three equals negative 11, three plus two. Okay. Uh, multiplying fractions actually isn't so bad. You just go straight across. So let's just show that step. So for those of you who I know, some of you do want to remember these skills. Um, negative 8 ninths minus 12 over 6 equals negative 44 over 9 plus 2. Um, and then if I wanted to actually add these, um, I would reduce that first. 12 6 is just 2. And uh, then I would, I need a, a common denominator. So to make two have a denominator of nine, I have to multiply it by nine over nine. And I actually have to do it here too. So I'd have negative eight ninths minus 18 over nine. And this would be negative 44 over nine plus eight. And so then in your calculator, you would just do negative eight minus 18. That's negative 26 over nine. And that doesn't reduce, actually, because that's 13 and 2, and that's 3 and 3. And then negative 40, not, yeah, that's a 44. 44 plus 18 is also negative 26, which is good, because that means we have negative 26 over 9 equals negative 26 over 9. So it works out. So 4 thirds is the correct answer. I also knew that because I have a solution over here, and I want it. I like to make sure I'm not doing it wrong on the video for you guys. So that is solving equations with fractions. The trick is getting rid of that denominator so that now we don't have a nasty fraction. We just have a regular multi-step equation. Um, and then for checking, so there we go. Solving equations with fractions. Um, go ahead and get to work on the assignment. I didn't make it very long. I don't want to overdo this, but when you're done, you need to, um, or sorry, if you get stuck, you need to come to office hours and get some help. Okay. Don't just let it go. Oh, I don't get it. You need to get it. So it will be on the test when you're done with this. Um, if the proportions assignment is up, you can work on that. Or remember, I have posted those extra credit assignments that you can be doing to help practice the skills that we're just not going to have time to get to this trimester. So good luck and have fun.